Hey hackers, what's going on? It's Aaron Trailer, and today I'm going to show you how to go from music hoarder to getting your crates in order. Oh, hold on, disclaimer. Your results are not guaranteed. This training is only for those who are ready to work and realize that success does not come easy and are willing to put in the work when problems arise. Ready? Let's start hacking. My promise to you is to banish Serato Face and find your next song faster. Organize your messy crates with just a few clicks, ease your stress while DJing, get you out of the creative rut that many of us may be in, and bring your mixing into the top 1% of DJs. There's Joe Bunn. He thinks he's the party starter, but in reality, he's locked into that doom scroll where DJs are constantly looking for the next song. Herein lies the problem, hoarding, music hoarding. It's an issue among DJs, millions of songs. They've amassed treasure troves of libraries and gigabytes, terabytes. I read somewhere that Spotify alone dumps 60,000 new songs out per week. You might be the best DJ in the world, but keeping up with that amount of music per week can be pretty time consuming. Before you go any further, let me introduce myself. For those of you that don't know, I am Aaron Trailer. I'm a Cray Hackers co-founder, 25 year veteran DJ. I got my start in radio for five years, the official DJ for the Johnny Cash family. That might explain my affinity for black. Nationally syndicated in Las Vegas and Nashville, Tennessee. That's where I reside. I don't live too far away from Music Row, in fact just blocks away from where Elvis made his first album. I was recently voted the best national on-air personality, as well as voted best nightlife DJ here in Nashville. I also work with a company that provides up to 1,100 events per year in Nashville alone. So it's safe to say I love surrounding myself around music. I wear headphones 16 hours a day. I follow music charts more than a stockbroker would follow stocks. But with all the success comes failure. Here was my biggest failure. It was the opportunity to play in Las Vegas at the Aria Hotel. This is one of the most luxurious resorts on the Strip. I had a chance to play at the Liquid Pool Lounge. I was living in Montana at the time this happened. How many out there are from a small market? Me, I was from Big Sky Country. I ran local radio stations out there doing the mix shows in that market. And I knew a guy who knew a guy who was able to get me a booking in Vegas. And of course, for anybody in a small market, you're going to be like, yeah, I'd love to play in Vegas. Not knowing what you're signing up for, you without question raise your hand and say, I would love to be able to spin in Vegas, especially if you're a small town DJ like I was. Little did I know what I was really getting myself into. This is going to go way back here. Check this out. The gear that I was rocking at the time, Vegas came knocking. At that point in my life, I had a Dell computer and a Mixtrack Pro. Who had one of those Mixtrack Pros? Anyway, I was collecting music and it was all being stored on this. Oh man, was it a Seagate, I think? Seagate model, 250 gig. It was huge at the time. And I couldn't tell you how many songs were on it. But it wasn't just the songs. It was the folders that came along with it. It was the files that had low quality. Oh, man, it was a mess. It was a big mess. But I was able to extract a few great songs off of this beast and uh, put it on one of those USB hard drives. It's one of these guys, something similar to it at the time. It was a USB, which I knew would work with the gear that I was about to go perform on the CDJ 2000s and the DJM 900 series. At the time, this cost more than the car that I was driving. And especially from being in a small town, I had limited access to a pair of these. So if you can imagine, here I am working with this technology, and I have to quickly learn how to perform on this. So I did whatever any other DJ would do at the time and just reached out to friends. Hey, does anybody have a pair of CDJs? Could sure use some help getting used to how it works and had a couple bites. The way it ended up was I was able to get into a warehouse 
that had CDJs for rent and they set them up for me for two or three hours. And I remember trying to get the drivers right and making sure that the laptop would connect. It was a nightmare. It wasn't the drivers I was dealing with. It was the muscle memory that I was lacking. What do you do with this button? How about that crossfader? How does it feel under your fingers? I knew nothing like this, but I wasn't about to say no. I was going to give it the best I could. So here's what I was in for. The expectations were huge. I was going to play at the Liquid Pool Lounge right outside the Aria Hotel. And here's photos of the DJ before me. This was me. Why such a dramatic difference from this to this? So what you're not seeing is that moment where I take a USB and I plug it into the CDJs with my songs that I was going to play that hour. And immediately when I dropped it in, it started doing an emergency loop. It was at the point where I realized that the connection on the other CDJ wasn't connecting the way it was supposed to. I should have had two of these to begin with. But next thing you know, that USB bottoms out on me. It starts doing that emergency loop. And so I instantly cut it down because it kept playing the same beat over and over again. I cut it down and everyone's looking around at the DJ, me, and I'm telling people, give it a second. And so what I instantly do is I go back to tried and true, thinking that this is going to be able to plug into this. That didn't work out. I finally get an iPod running and plug it into one of the extra channels to buy me some time, all the while struggling with this and drivers and compatibility and clearing the pool. I've heard of DJs clear dance floors before, but who could clear a pool? That was me. Look at this picture. So this was the guy that knew the guy that got me the gig to play at the Aria Hotel. And this is that moment where he's whispering into my ear, hey, I see you're having trouble. I'm going to bring another DJ on for you. and But don't worry. You can still stay at the hotel and dinner's on me tonight. I just, I froze. I didn't know what to do. I realized that there was no way I could save myself from this. And I really want to know who took this picture. <laughs> because the timing is just perfect. It's a constant reminder every time I see this that this is really where Cray Hackers started. It was that moment of, oh, no, I really screwed up my first opportunity. Realizing the whole time back in Montana, this was the problem, the hoarding of music. Thinking that 30 or 40 songs on this was going to save me, stupidity on my part. It's just dumb. Something had to change. I actually remember myself taking this picture. This is me leaving Vegas and heading off to... Montana, tail tucked between my legs, of course, thinking to myself, okay, we've got to fix something here. And it's moments like this where you really have a turning point. Do I continue to go the direction I'm going to keep going or do I change and start fresh? Have you ever ripped the Band-Aid off? Have you ever just said, screw it, I'm so over this. I was about to do that. But here on the bright side, I had some great opportunities back home. I'm coming back and I'm still hosting radio shows and I'm still honing my craft. Note that in this picture here that I've got my first pair of CDJs. <laughs> Could have used those a while back. But anyway, I would just sit there and hone my skill both in the studio and in the club. And there was often some parallels that I would notice being in a booth, projecting music on an FM radio signal, and... DJing and watching a reaction on the dance floor. Two very powerful things that I just surrounded myself around when I was younger. And that part where I decided to start over began with the one big true discovery that ultimately launched Cray Hacker's mindset. But it starts with the leap. You have to take the plunge. I do have a safety net. Follow and trust me. But let me show you the way that I started so you don't make the same mistakes. It began with the one folder to rule them all. You hear me talk about this a lot in the private group. The one folder to rule them all 
is something I want us all to experiment with. And rest assured, you won't have to worry. I'm not going to mess with your current collection. Everything stays the same for now, but play with me on this game. The one folder theory is a game changer. For starters, it's an instant duplicate killer. It's an ability to bulk delete via the columns that you can sort by. View the quality of your bit rate. Quality versus quantity is something you're going to hear me say a lot. Uh, quality 320 kilobytes, yada. We'll talk about high bit rate later. But not to lose you, I just want you to help find yourself the ideal backup, a clean library from scratch with everything in one place. No more folder structure nightmares. Not like what you saw me deal with back in Vegas, where it was folders upon folders and me searching for songs on that big clunky hard drive. You need to have it all uniform. So the one folder technique kind of works like this. Let me share my, if you don't mind, I'm going to share my screen. I've got the slides here. I set this up as an example, but pretend like you're on the inside of my C drive, right? And I've got music here, and I'd ultimately like to have everything in this folder. But the problem is I've got this and this over here and folders upon folders of songs that are just sitting somewhere else. So I decided to go through and open up each folder and dump everything into one big folder starting from scratch. What I noticed was something pretty amazing would happen when I took songs from one folder and put them into another. See this screen right here? This one here. Let me read it for you. It says, an item already exists in this collection. Do you want to replace it with the one you're moving? Follow me on this. This is a duplicate killer in itself. If you ever see this thing pop up and you're bringing songs into the next, unless there are cue points or beat grids that are saved into that MP3, you would want to definitely get rid of the duplicates, right? So just by doing all of this, I realized that I can get rid of duplicates with ease. Look at that. So the folder's empty. Now, this, I want to warn you, if you start doing this on your own, it gets pretty damaging. I'm not telling you to do this step by step right now. This will destroy your cue points. This will destroy your beat grids. And that's really cherished amongst a lot of DJs. So what I propose is we work smarter and not harder. There's going to be some songs you're going to lose in this process. So before we go any deeper, please back up everything. I really want you all to practice the art of backing up your backups on backups. If you have to put it into a locker or safe, fireproof, this is your paycheck. If you think about it, your library, if you're a DJ, is your performance. So back it up on back it up. But play with me in this sandbox. I really believe that this one folder is going to loosen up a lot of restrictions and help you feel so less stressed. The anxiety is going to wash away if you experiment with me on this. Again, it's the instant duplicate killer. And then I haven't even shown you that with a mass majority of songs, you can go ahead and columnize, much like you would a spreadsheet, the artist column, the title column, and be able to identify, wait, do I have too many versions of this? You can see that instantly. And of course, the bit rate. Taking that folder once you're done with it and dropping it into Dropbox is a breeze now because it's far less than what you used to have. No more folder structure nightmares. I've been practicing this philosophy and the ripping the Band-Aid off over the past 10 years, realizing that I have too many songs. And also coming to the understanding that as a radio DJ, charts are very unreliable for the working DJ. I can't play what's on a top 40 radio station at a club. Radio and club are two totally separate worlds. However, there's a philosophy I'd like to be able to bring into the fold of oh. helping program your sets. There's some secrets that radio station program directors know that I know that I want to share with you. And if you can use that as a secret weapon for your performances, 
then let's start hacking, right? You got to make some moves and show me you're serious. Let's talk about this one folder theory in the comments. Tell me your fears about it. Remember, there is a way to automate this and create a backup in the Crate Hackers desktop software, which I haven't even begun to show you, but this is the reason why we're here. Crate Hackers was built because we wanted to help you find the next song faster. And our community of DJs took this theory and made it a technology. It's even got artificial intelligence baked into it now. So over the 10 years of doing all of this experimenting, I discovered the hard way. I failed miserably, but came back stronger and with some secrets that I would love to share so you don't have to make the same mistakes I did. You're going to get the easy way. You're going to get the crate hacker way. So please stick around because I've got much more to share. It's all a part of the three secrets of how to go from music hoarder to getting your crates in order. I'll have another secret to share on the next episode.